In today's video, we'll be transforming the garage floor using Rust-Oleum's Epoxy Shield Garage Floor Kit. Let's get started with this process. What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, definitely consider subscribing. So in the previous video, we painted these black walls white using bare um, I-300, I believe is what it was called, paints, really good stuff. Uh, it covered pretty well. We did three coats over the black and it looks so much better in here. It's so much brighter and that was the main focus was to make it brighter uh, and the black just looked old and dingy. Made it real dark and gloomy in here, but lighting shouldn't be an issue now because it's nice and bright. Um, but today, as you can see, these garage floors definitely need redone. So we're going to be using Rust-Oleum's Epoxy Shield, which these were about $75, I believe. Um, and it does say one car garage kit. They do make two car garage kits, two and a half car garage kits, but I couldn't find it in the gray gloss. So this is what I got. Just got two of them. We're going to see how much one does, and then we'll go that, go from there and put the other one if we need it. Um, we got the Rust-Oleum cleaner and degreaser for concrete. This is a must for uh, the preparation of this for, for it to stick well. And as you can see, someone else had in the past tried to do something with the floor. I don't know if they used uh, just normal gray garage concrete paint, but they didn't do a very good job. Um, so I'm going to have to try to get as much of this up or all of it up. I don't have a floor sander. I went to Home Depot and they actually don't have any to rent right now. Um, and that kind of sucks because I finally got the funds to go get one and I couldn't even get one. So we're going to use the wire brush on the grinder and a hook and loop 80 grit sandpaper plus a sander uh, and try to get as much of it up as possible. But if I can't, I'm going to try to at least make it smooth all the way around and uh, it should be good so that once we put the acid etch, it'll etch into the concrete. I don't know how it will react on top of the paint. so. I'm going to try to do the best I can and uh, sand it down. Wear eye protection. I got my safety glasses over there. Use this and see how it does. If I can't get it up, we'll probably have to rent a floor sander. But after that, we'll spray it down and uh, deep scrub and make it real clean so that we have a good prepped surface for the paint. So I'm going to go ahead and get started with that. So I've done this section here and a lot of it came up on the areas that were flaking like in here, but this isn't a very effective method. I'm going to try the 80 grit and if that doesn't work very well, I'm just going to sand it the best I can. Um, I'm still going to try to make a couple calls, see if I can find a floor sander, but if I can't, we're just going to work with what we have as we always do. So I'm going to go ahead and try. All right, everything is closed early, um, no floor sanders. I tried, so I made my own floor sander. Is it ghetto? Absolutely. Will it work? Probably not, but we're gonna try it anyways. So here we go. Alright, so this is the best I could get it to come up with the wire wheel on the grinder and the 80 grit sandpaper. I used all the sandpaper up. Um, no extra pieces are coming up, so it should be okay. But if in the future I have to basically just redo that side, and get the floor sander and do it the right way, then I will. Um, but, but I do recommend try to do it right the first time so you don't have to repeat it. 
Um, I'm just doing what I can. I'm running low on time. I need to get some builds out and stuff like that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and wash this down. The Rust-Oleum cleaner into greaser and I'm just gonna scrub it down then rinse it all out of here do the same on this side after that's done i'll put some muriatic acid and water mixture into a pump sprayer uh, spray the concrete in 10 by 10 sections and scrub it in and then rinse it out and the uh, degreaser and the muriatic acid as long as they are rinsed out and diluted with water uh, it will not harm the environment so um, i figured i'd just point that out but yeah, it's basically ready for me to start rinsing out, scrubbing, and, and then we can get to painting after that dries. So I'm going to go ahead and start sweeping. So the GoPro keeps messing up. It keeps turning off. I think this GoPro is a piece of crap, so I'm probably gonna have to buy a new one eventually when I can afford to. Um, I'm gonna go ahead, I've already put hot water in here. I don't think it has to be hot, but I like to do it this way. Um, about to right here, and then I'm gonna put muriatic acid about right up to there, mix it up, use the pump sprayer, spray everywhere, scrub it in, and then rinse it out. And then we will let the fan dry this, and once that's dry, we'll be good to go to putting in our coats of paint. The fumes are kind of harsh, so wear a respirator and be in a well-ventilated area or have a fan drawing air out um, because it can get in your eyes and your respiratory system. It's very fatal. So um, just make sure to take precautions and don't get it on your skin. If you do, rinse it off quickly and you'll be good to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and start mixing it up. So I'm just gonna use this box fan that I made with a filter on the back. It's a house filter. This is what I use for painting uh, to filter it outside. Just like a 98 cent filter taped to the back of a box fan. Works pretty good. Uh, no dust will come through. So we're gonna air dry this. And once it's dry, we can uh, measure the temperature of the ground, make sure it's 55 degrees or higher, and then we can apply our coat. So I'm just gonna let it dry. All right, floor is dried. I went ahead and hit it with the broom one last time to get any last debris out. For this step, I will be barefoot. That way I don't track anything with my shoes. Um, and if I feel something with my foot, I can easily scoot it out of the way. But so far, it feels really good. Everything is clean and dry. So I'm gonna be taking the box, opening it up, and it will have this two-part epoxy burst pack. We'll basically just uh, run run it together i'll show you how to do it and then it'll burst open inside and we'll mix it up really well and i have the decorative chips that i will add as i go um, but it has the instructions sheet if you ever get lost uh, it's a real simple easy way to do it but i'm going to start with the edges so i'm going to go ahead and open the pack that's in here and get it all mixed up i will be putting it in a five gallon bucket from ace um, just so that I can dip my stuff in there and I was just gonna pour it directly on the ground But I think I'm gonna go with this method um, and see how much one box does so this is a two-car garage 
And so we're gonna see exactly what it can do. This is the concrete etch. You wanna mix this with water. I already did this using the uh, muratic acid, but this basically is the same stuff. There's the decorative chips, which will basically be taking pinch fools and kind of sprinkling it. I'm not gonna just throw it all down in one spot. We'll, you know, kind of sprinkle it out as we go. All right, this is the burst pack that I was talking about. Now I'm gonna show you exactly how to do it. That's basically it. Now we just mix it up really well. Looks like we're good to go. I did forget to show you that the temperature of the ground is 67 to 68 degrees. Um, you want it above 55 degrees to 80 degrees in that range is ideal. That side is done, so now we get to start on the actual floor part. Okay, so now that we're done, um, to clean these out, soap and water works perfectly fine. And if you get it on you like I have, soap and water takes it right off. As long as you wash it off as soon as you're finished. But there it is, garage floor is done. Um, I don't have the clear coat or anything like that, so this will just have to work. It looks a thousand times better than it did. And it was like $75, I believe, for the uh, one car garage kit. Now this is a two car garage, but the one car garage kit did work for the entire thing. Um, it could have been because I already had this side halfway done or whatever prior to uh, putting the coat on. I don't know why it just did work, but as you can see that spot over there is the most dry area since that's where we started and it has a really deep gloss finish to it. So it should look pretty good even without the epoxy clear. Um, that spot's starting to shine up like that. And of course this is fresh, so this one's definitely not even close yet. But 
I'm going to put the fan on it and uh, let it dry it up. I think six to 12 hours is what is recommended before we can walk on it and three days before pulling a vehicle on it. So um, in about six to 12 hours, roughly, we will be back and we'll see what the garage floor looks like. But so far, I think it looks really good. All right, so it's been right at 16 hours. Um, I decided to go a little bit longer and I can walk on it and everything looks really good. For not having a gloss clear over, it does have a decent reflection. Um, if I were to put the gloss uh, clear epoxy over the top of it, then it would be even shinier, but it looks good. It feels fine. Uh, I'm not gonna pull the vehicles on it. I'm gonna wait the full three days, um, maybe longer, we'll see. I don't want to take too much time because I do have to get some vehicles done. But I will definitely keep you guys updated and let you know how this Rust-Oleum product works. And no, I am not sponsored by Rust-Oleum. A lot of people ask that. Um, they denied me many times, so I'm just out here doing what I can with what I have. And Rust-Oleum products are pretty good, so that's why I choose to use them. But um, yeah, I think it looks awesome. has a really good glossy finish. and. Uh, I'm really happy with it. So I definitely recommend it if you are a budget DIYer and you have a garage floor that needs done. Um, I'm going to wait to put the engine stand and heavier stuff on it for a couple more days just to be sure though. Um, because I think that's where a lot of people have their issues is they end up uh, getting impatient, pulling on it, and then it peels some of it up, some of it up because they haven't officially let it fully cure. So I'm happy with it. And uh, I think the garage looks amazing now with the painted walls and the floor being done. This will be a great space for me to get a lot of work and a lot of videos out for you guys. I know it's been kind of slow. I've been trying to do the best I can, get everything moved. We've been working on funds. Um, so we're just happy with how everything's turning out now. So if you guys liked this video, be sure to hit the like button and drop a comment below. A lot of you have been wanting this type of video. So here it is. It's officially out. So I hope you guys enjoyed the content as much as I did enjoyed recording it um, and doing it. So I'll see you guys in the next one. Till then, God bless, stay safe, stay awesome. And if you're new here, definitely consider subscribing. We'll see you then, guys.